Uh, this tank is an EBR Hotchkiss. This is a French Tier 7 light tank. The map is Himmelsdorf. I'm going to show you a sniping position you can play on this map. Uh, I just started playing this tank. I'm not very good with the wheeled vehicles yet. And it's difficult to find a good place uh, to play wheeled vehicles on, um, on this map. Especially with Encounter, because you're really exposing yourself to come up to a good sniping spot. Uh, this is a good sniping spot. But a lot of enemy tanks could easily come here and find me. There's a lot of little intricacies you got to know about when you play in this location. You can see I did 140, 104 damage on the Tiger 1 and 121 on the Progetto 46. They're never going to spot me. Look at that. Four hits so far. Not very accurate. Uh, but it, it does, if I did critical damage, I must have hit that uh, tiger. So you got, you see there's a building between me and that other EBR. You got to make sure that that building is lined up. Ah, uh, that sucks. Okay, so I did 450 damage. Uh, you want to make sure that that building that's off in the distance there is lined up behind where you're sniping. It kind of was, but I guess I got spotted because the other EBR came out. And I really haven't figured out how, how to handle this, but I know what the dangers are. Um, so you want that building to block you as much as possible. Uh, it is a very dangerous position. You do have to be aware of your sniper support, but as you can see, you can definitely damage enemy tanks. If I had stayed alive, I would have done a lot more damage to those tanks up there on the hill. And absolutely, if I had a regular tank with, tra with tracks, I would have had a better game. This tank is a T110E4. This is an American Tier 10 tank destroyer, and the map is Live Oaks. So what I usually like to do is shoot... Ah, uh, that sucks. Don't worry about it. I like to shoot down this diagonal road over here and ambush these tanks. But unfortunately, because I'm a slow tank, they all got there. They spotted me. I wasn't in a hull down position. That's okay, because uh, something good is going to come out of this game. Notice that there's a gap over here. And I wanted to knock that house down. I don't know if I can knock that house down, but it looks like it's possible to knock it down. You can see that there's bushes in front of me. There is uh, some wooden structures. There's some concrete structures. And there's a rather a decent-sized gap. Uh, so the enemy just crossed over. I didn't really get a good lock on him. Got a few issues with what's going on. Repositioning. But look at that. I could probably shoot right through those objects. 697 damage on the uh, Type 5 Heavy. And he will be very unable to turn his gun and shoot at me. He's just not in a position to do so. He's got, he's got bigger problems. Same with this other tank. He doesn't have a lot of room to aim. I know I'm going to hit that E100, so be patient. This is not fun. There it is. 666 damage on the E100. So you're starting to see that this position is really cool, especially if you want to use regular rounds or you're a lower tier tank. I wish I had a faster reload. Lucky, 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 lucky. 706 damage on the Type 5 Heavy. He could easily be taken out of the game by an HE round from one of my allies. My allies are shooting at his frontal armor, which is very strong, and I'm hitting the weaker side armor. And it looks like they might be afraid to cross that gap. So I'm keeping, preventing the enemy from crossing that gap. Okay. 
Look at where that Progetto is on the minimap down there in the south. I feel strongly that we can play this position. The enemy, Look at what the enemy did. They won the entire east side of the map. The score is 1-7. to seven. So this is an unusual game. Don't give up on this position. I'm going to show you more replays from this position in the future. This tank is the P-43. This is an Italian Tier 7 medium tank, and the map is Ruinburg. I'm going to show you a sniping position that you can play on this map. So when I play, I often like to play along the red line. I'm going to show you another position. It's basically right there. Uh, you see where that Panzer T-25 icon is? There's a house and there's a bunch of rubble. You can go sit over there. It's a great position. I might be playing it in this game and it might be in a different game. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to see how the uh, game develops. Okay, so I'm, it looks like I'm going to play along the red line. And what I do is I come over here and you can shoot through, the, through these buildings. And look at that. You're not going to get spotted. You get open shots on these guys, and if they're new players, they have no idea what to do. They're just going to sit there. Okay, it's too bad that I screwed up and I moved, and I lost my lock on his position. Okay, so there is a threat in front of me that I got to deal with. I am pretty safe from the tanks. The KV-2, I'm surrounded by buildings, the slope of the land, the list goes on. It's a pretty safe position. You notice that I knocked the tree down. It was a little bit difficult, but I'm going to do that so it gives me a little bit of an advantage. I know I can't snipe that guy, but, you know, stupid me, I check anyway. Could easily take a wild shot, see what happens. Okay, so the TD's out of the game. You just go through here, advance to the bushes, spot and see if you uh, see something. Score is 4-0. to zero. Go to the next building. You see we got a Cromwell. Now the first thing to do is to just sit and wait and keep him proximity spotted. Probably don't want the rear on that side. And see how he's trying to come around? I want my frontal armor on that side. But let my allies do some damage to him. Didn't really line up the tank very well. Really need the high explosive rounds. But that's what I mean when I talk about not going for damage and kills and trying to be a team player and working with your team, waiting to become unspotted. You know, I got hit, obviously. You know, that's a smart way to play. You don't have to be a, um, a hero. Okay, so we're really getting outside of the scope of the sniping position. Let's move on to the next video. This tank is a Waffentrager Alf Panzer IV or Panzer Wagon IV. Uh, this is a British Tier 9, sorry, German Tier 9 tank destroyer. The map is Ensk. Um, I don't have a lot of experience sniping from a distance on almost any map, including this one. But what's important is that I did find a sniping position that you can play on this map if you have... Uh, a tank that's suitable for playing from a distance. So one of the things that I did was I stopped using coated optics on a lot of my sniper tanks, uh, and I started using Binox instead. This is an example of a tank that's using Binox. Uh, one of the good things about playing here in the back is you can just drive, you know, east and west to reposition and open up a lot of different possibilities in the positioning of your tank. Okay, so the first tank is out of the game. I was very happy to uh, find this. And you know, you're going to know that other tanks have played this position. Maybe you've played it before. This is my first time playing with this technique on this map. And I'm sure I'm going to refine it. So in the future, I'll uh, make some changes. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So one of the things you want to do is you really want to be closer to the red line. The distance uh, gives you safety. You want to be as far from the enemy as possible. 
that was 497 damage on the T30. Look at where he is on the minimap. He's not safe there. 427 damage on the T30. So the driving is a little bit easy. It's just going back and forth. And maybe I've run out of targets to play in this position. The good thing is you do have coverage of the cap. Oh, look at that. You know what? He's going to move too fast. And because he's moving too fast, it's going to be hard for me to get a good shot on him. I believe he's hiding behind a, 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 some pipes. Yeah, that already is going to be tough. I think I'm going to go help out my allies. So that's going to probably, we're getting to the end of the sniping position. You know, I see it, an opportunity to gang up on that E100. And he doesn't really, he's not fully aware that I'm here. So I just kind of took a guess at where I thought his lower plate might be. That aiming reticle, the aiming circle is really good on this tank. There's no denying it. Very hard to see what I'm actually aiming at. Unfortunately, I missed the 50 TP. But it's interesting because now you see, you know that tanks frequently go to where the 50 TP is. So now you can see how easy it is to line up a shot on him. Okay, so we're going to be getting outside the scope of uh, the sniping position. Let's move on to the next video. This tank is the P-43. This is an Italian Tier 7 medium tank, and the map is Studzianki. Uh, we're going to be looking at a sniping position that you can play on this map. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit. Okay, so one of the issues that I have is even though I'm top tier, I'm really not a strong armored tank. So I'm going to have difficulty going up against enemy tanks that have strong armor. So I decided to come over here and play in this alternative position. You can see that there's lots of tanks to shoot at. And if you look at the minimap, you're going to see that some of the houses off in the distance are a light gray in color, which means that I'll be able to destroy them and knock them down and shoot the tanks that are behind those houses. So there's an example where I knocked a house down and, and I'll be able to shoot a tank uh, behind that house. You may have also noticed that there was a Studzianki sign, which is actually right on screen right now. Okay, so the enemy uh, tanks have shown up. They do look like uh, heavy tanks. Um, obviously, if I have to do something, and if I have to go after them, I will. You can see that where I knocked the house down, I'm able to hit another P-43. All he's got to do is reverse a little bit. He's unaware that his tank is exposed. I could easily take a blind shot, but I'm going to wait for him to be spotted. I'm going to be doing a little bit of advancing. Yeah, you see, that was uh, unfortunately a miss. There's always a chance that I hit a tank uh, without realizing it. Okay, so knock down that house. They're unaware that that house is knocked down. And I'm not being spotted. So again, this position is good if you don't have strong armor or it's a little bit too crowded uh, where the heavy tanks are or if you just want to be able to hit people on the side or maybe your gun's not that strong or maybe you have a really good sniping gun. If you have a low penetration gun, you're going to uh, be able to hit tanks on the side armor, which means you're more likely to penetrate. And it's a good strategy. You want to have crossfire. You're also going to be able to keep an eye on what's going on in the center here. I 
Haven't gotten any damage, no spotting damage. Looks like there might be a tank that's vulnerable around the corner. Scores two to six. It isn't a perfect position. Okay, there we got something. Got 241 damage and one kill. Oh, that's too bad I missed that shot. I'm sure we'll be able to get this guy. And remember, just because I'm using the auto-aim doesn't mean I'm going to fire with the auto-aim. I'm constantly turning it on and off. That was a lousy shot. You can see it is a little bit of a hull down position over here. Unfortunately, there are spotted tanks, but they're outside of my shooting range. Oh, he disappeared. As you can see, at long range, this gun is not very good. I could have gone for that VK. Uh, probably would, would have been more likely to do some damage. Okay, so I got 661 damage, 225 blocked by armor. This tank is the Object 263. This is a Russian Tier 9 tank destroyer. The map is Murovanka. You're going to look at this tank and say, oh, you heard this is an overpowered tank. This is an overpowered tank. It's absolutely an overpowered tank. Let's look at the specs on it. The penetration is 258, which is good uh, because this is Tier 9. If it were Tier 8, that would be really high. The damage is 440. APCR penetration is 340. 340 is actually very good uh, for Tier 9 um, heat rounds. Okay, so I don't like to play the easy positions. I like to play something that's very challenging. Let's see, And I guess I'm going to have a good game. One Over here, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do over here. Because nobody expects you to play within the, all these buildings, but you're surrounded by solid objects, and there's a lot of bushes to hide in. So you could easily do a lot of damage over here without being spotted. You, you know, it's ideally you want to have a mobile tank, um, but I don't have that. But let's see how we do against this defender. If they try anything risky, they're dead. The other issue is, as you can see, I need to move forward to get myself into a good firing position. It makes me a lot more vulnerable. And there I risk being spotted, so I have to worry about uh, getting shot. I'm rotating my armor. Becoming unspotted. I was really worried that, that someone might shoot me from uh, due north. But perhaps there's no one there. Okay, let's see if we can get this defender. If there's a tall tank like a Type 5 Heavy, you're going to have shots on it. Oh, I hit an ally. That sucks. I have a lot of Battle Buddy awards. I've got like 400, more than just about anybody. So I rarely hit an ally. It looks like I switched to the high explosive rounds. I hit the ally. I don't, oh, okay, I probably did do damage. Oh, 
Okay, so I didn't get any damage. But I do have some good games over here. If there's a lot of enemy tanks over there, you're going to get a lot of good shots. I'm going to speed it up. Okay, now look at what's happening on the mini-map. Basically, the enemy has us surrounded. And I like to play a leadership type of role. I do what needs to be done to win the game. If my allies are afraid to do something, I'm going to do it. You notice we got a low and a scorpion that are kind of in the background. They're not, you know, they, they're obviously in a playable position, but they're not in in a front position. I'm going to be on the front line spotting, even though I have this huge uh, hulk of a tank destroyer. And I'm pretty sure that Emil is not going to be happy that I'm here. I remember him not reacting to me. Okay, the score is 7 to 6. I got to keep an eye on everyone, so I use the auto aim. At some point, I seem to recall I'm going to spot for the team. Okay, so he's out of the game. Got to move forward to get on the other side of that hill. It'll give you a little bit of extra protection. Don't sit there. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Correct. And then stop over here somewhere. It's better to just knock the building down. I don't want to run out there and have to kill him. So just knock that building down so he can't hide. Oh, look at that. There's a Waffentrager. Now, that's something you want your team to know. You want your team to know there's a Waffentrager and a standard B out there. Especially the Waffentrager. Now, you notice I put WT with T44. However, I forgot to mention the standard B, which is a very dangerous tank. And both of those tanks, and they're in the... Uh, in the chat, you see I put standard B with T44. They're both running APCR rounds, which is going to be uh, bad news. You know, you want people to know when that's going on. Because people might say, oh, it's just a standard B, I don't care. Well, if he's running uh, high, peer, high penetrating rounds, it's a big deal. Speed it up a little bit. So the enemy is not doing a good job. They should have destroyed us. But something about the way they're playing is just wrong. Oh, it's too bad. Now, if that T-44 does something really stupid, he's going to die. I do have a lot of rounds, so um, I can afford to fire a lot of rounds. And you notice that I'm not being spotted when I'm firing my gun. It's probably because the enemy is outside of the, of the spotting range. Scores 10 to 9. The T-44, he's not doing anything useful for his team. He really should be in that spotting bush so I can kill him. And now he's out of the game. So now I'm going to go forward, not spotted. Like I said, I'm going to do what my allies are not willing to do. My allies are not willing to go spot, and I'm going to beat the Maoshin. I got a lot of hit points. I expect that my allies are going to back me up. If I spot anything, my allies have to do something about it. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my time. And because of the slope of the terrain, it might be difficult for my allies to do something. It's not necessary for me to go after that standard B. I just need to spot them. And you see, the my team took care of everything else. I did not get any spotting damage. Uh, oh, look at that. We found the Artie. So I didn't get any spotting damage for the Waffentrager. And it's like I say, you know, I play a role where I do something important for my team where I might not get rewarded for it. And the reason why is because if that Waffentrager fires his gun, 
my allies will all spot him. So then I'm no longer the one who spotted him. Okay, so now that the Maoshin is here, now it's going to be about teamwork. We can both go in at the same time. Ram him. I rammed him for 100 damage. He's out of the game. Artie just missed me. We're going to fast forward. So we got an EBR. That means we really have to have a capping strategy. Okay, I remember this game. We need a capping strategy because the enemy tank is an enemy light tank. And notice I'm telling my allies to stay together. And it's safer to go through the town, not not through an open area. We're not all going to go in the safest way. You notice I'm pinging on the map where my allies should go. Even though, you know, I did it, you know, here, 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 here. I hope that they figure out, follow this path. Uh, but, they're, but they won't. The Maoshin is probably going to go the wrong way. The 50 TP is going to go the wrong way. The Maoshin should not go that way. He's lucky he's got good armor because uh, he can sustain being in an open field, and I'm telling the 50 TP, don't go there. That's the wrong move. Where I am going is the absolute best way to go. I've got this big slope on my side, which is going to give me a lot of protection, and I'm going through the buildings, and there's a lot of bushes. It's the easiest way to advance. Although the route that the 50 TP is not such a bad route, but it's better if we all go together. I don't like the fact that we're all separated because we cannot support each other. Now, you're going to have to say, at some point, that EBR is going to be in front of us. He's either going to be waiting for us, which is really dumb, or he's going to come after us, which would be really smart. And I said, I'll wait for you guys, which means I'm going to find a place to park. Okay, I guess I didn't. I guess I thought I would wait kind of over here. Ah, and look what happens. And I am so vulnerable. You see the problem here? That's why we needed to stay together. And there's really nothing I can do. And I rotated my tank the wrong way. But luckily, uh, the 50 TP, I'm pretty sure he's going to finish the job. I, I know that we're going to win this game. The 50 TP is a hero here. This is definitely a game worth watching. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I don't know what happens. But I think we won the game. 